Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I've been putting off this video for quite some time. And it's just because the the atmosphere around the Discovery event is really unfortunate. The Discovery of event in general is really unfortunate. And I was in a really weird spot because... I was really excited. I, as many of you who follow me know, I am a huge fan of Star Trek Discovery. I I think it's probably the funnest uh, Star Trek to watch right now. It's got great writing, great acting. And so when it finally came to this game, I was really excited. And then everything happened. So I'm going to go ahead and break that down. Uh, I actually did buy a couple of things, so I'm going to show those off to you guys. I wrote a message over to Panic about everyone's feedback about the event, what I believe is going to happen in the future. So, starting off, we have Discovery Part 1. Keep in mind, that's a really important part. Part 1, this is just one arc of the Discovery arcs. At least I'm hoping and assuming based on what I'm seeing right in front of me. So this is kind of going along with what I want to talk about. So the, the discovery is going to be separated in several arcs. We've seen this before. We've seen this with the Borg arc. They had several arcs to it. And a lot of people are saying, where is the rest of the crew? I believe those crew are going to be splattered between the different arcs. So not a lot of people have to worry about not seeing Captain Giorgio, not seeing Sylvia Tilly. I believe those crew are still coming to the game in those various arcs. The, the good. The good is definitely the battle pass. $20 for the elite battle pass. And the rewards have definitely been rewarding. Also like that you can get the USS Discovery for free on the free side of the battle pass as long as you're doing the events. The only thing I'm thinking about down the road is what about people who didn't have time to do the battle pass? How are they going to be getting the Discovery in the future? Is it something that they're going to have to pay for? Or is it something where they have to submit a ticket to Scopely and Scopely will send them one? That's really left up in the air. So that is the downfall for it being in the battle pass. There is no clear cut way that if you've missed this, how you get it in the future. And like I said, there, there's, there's so many great rewards in here. I, I definitely think this is the highlight of the first arc of discovery. So let's go ahead and take a look at the USS discovery itself. So many of you know, the USS discovery is an explorer, explorer vessel. And the first thing that I notice here is I think the artwork from the bottom of the discovery is actually really good. The artwork on top <laughs> is definitely, um, <laughs> I definitely feel like it's a rush job. You, it's really difficult for you to make out the registry of the ship, the ship name, but really on the secondary hull, this is where I see a really big rush job. These are actually raised support strats that are on the back of the USS Discovery. And it looks like they're just laying flat with the rest of the hull. There is, there's no, there's nothing there at all. And being a huge Discovery geek, this is definitely one of the things I look at is there is no uh, depth at all in that design in the backwards of the ship there but the ship itself as we can see we can look at the stats the attack the defense and the health this is really comparable to the vidar with the exception of the attack the vidar has a much higher attack and so we can definitely tell this is not going to be a, sh a ship to pve in uh, definitely no pvp 
This is definitely event driven and only for the event. Many of you know that the Discovery is primarily a mining ship, which I think it's odd to, when you think about being in line with the actual series. I get why they made it a mining ship in this game, since mining mycelium is definitely going to be a big, big point of the arc. And the Discovery has that bonus for harvesting mycelium and increasing that speed. The other thing I've noticed here as well is approximately 20% of its cargo is protected. Now, this is higher than the Vidar which is a little bit different. However, you're not going to be able to... Actually, you could probably go and use this as a mining ship. It really depends on your server's ROE, because they all get really, really complicated when it talks about warships mining. I think this... This will this will definitely throw a little bit of a wrench into that for a lot of players. I definitely wouldn't suggest mining regular materials with it, but definitely mining mycelium is going to be a huge bonus. So the next thing I just want to take a look at is the officers that we do have access to. So right now we have Origin Saru. Origins Stamets and Origins Burnham. The very first thing that I was very surprised by is they are not in the same synergy group as Saru and Michael Burnham. Now that might make sense for Origin Saru, but Origin Stamets is in his Discovery uniform. I'm not sure what is going on with that at all. I believe he should be in the synergy group with Saru and Burnham. Unless we are getting another Stamets to do that. Which I wouldn't be so opposed to considering that the Origin Stamets officer abilities and captain abilities is pretty lackluster. So as far as as far as these three go, there is nothing great about them. They are definitely going to be <laughs> just collecting charts because you're trying to get to the better crew. So if you look at Saru's captain ability on the Origins version, he increases the defense of all officers on the ship by 10. Just 10 points. That's it. It's not percent. It's just 10 points. And then he increases the hull health of the ship by 10%. And this is his third level. So... There is nothing really to talk about with him. Stamets does the same thing with Officer Health by 10 points. He does have a Warp Increase ability by 38%, which you could definitely use if you, if you need that. I think Helvia is probably got a much better ability than Stamets does. The only thing is... If you're going to be taking on cargo or not, then Helvia's ability gets shut down and Stamets would still be active. Burnham, she increases the weapon damage of the ship by 11%. This reminds me a lot of Cadet Kirk. And she increases the attack of all officers on the ship by 15 points. So there's really nothing at all that great about them. Now, this is where we start looking at some interesting things. So, big shout out to Taylor Stastic from Server 12. He pointed this out to me that Saru in the right synergy group at the, at the you know, certain tiers that you may get, he could be a really good con counter or con <laughs> Um, because so many people use Khan in PvP, he could definitely delay Khan's uh, critical ability um, quite a bit, depending if, if you can increase that with a synergy group, depending on who is in that synergy group, which is going to lead me over to Burnham. And then this one, I think ever since they 
nerfed Carol. This ability has, I mean, it's base damage. It isn't great. It does, it does, I think it was doing like, it was mitigating 4K a hit. Or I wouldn't say mitigating, but it was decreasing the attack by 4K. It was like, instead of 76, it was 72. And so there, there was an effect, but you really didn't notice that too much. And then Burnham. Burnham's definitely going to be really difficult to get. But the first thing I see here is when fighting players for each weapon attack that hits the opponent, Michael Burnham removes 30% of the total attack of all officers on your ship from the opponent's shield health. So that will definitely be very handy in PvP, as well as going into synchronize with Saru's captain ability and her captain ability is nothing it's she just increases the impulse speed of the ship by 15 points there's there's nothing i can say about that it's just absolutely st stupid however this officer ability i think will work really well with saru and i think it makes a lot of sense for him to be captain in this situation because saru is the commander in charge of the discovery and leading up into the season, that question still remains, who is in charge? Because in season two, it was Captain Pike. He was commanding the USS Discovery. And he kind of left Saru in charge. And now they are very far away from their timeline in Starfleet. So I'm really curious to kind of see what will happen in the show. But as far as the game goes, it makes a lot of sense why he would be the captain on the, on the Discovery. So that talks about crew. We don't know much else that is going on with any other crew members that are going to be added. So I'm going to go ahead and before I talk about events, I'm going to look at the packs because this has been a really confusing part for a lot of people. A lot of people are asking me, which pack do I buy? Do I hold off on, on buying packs? What event am I looking for? That sort of thing. And the best thing I can tell you is if you do want to buy a pack, don't worry about the USS Discovery. They haven't run any events where it has made sense for us as players to go and buy the ship ahead of time. As it is, we are going to be unlocking the USS Discovery in the next couple of days in the Battle Pass. There is one thing to look at when it comes to items in packs that you really want. And let me see if it's in here. Nope, it's not in here. I know it's in this one. It's this thing right here. Spore drive components. So the spore drive components is how you're going to be able to tear up your ship. And how you're getting those as fast as you're getting those is really going to depend on some other factors as well when it comes to discovery related stuff, which I'll get to. So right now I'm sitting at 1900 spore drive components and the majority I got were from, let me show you guys here. From these packs right here. So the discovery recruit specials, this, the, <laughs> I think I was talking to some friends and uh, they could see how upset I was when Pike and Spock were added to this pack. I don't want to pay for Pike and Spock. They're free. I have Spock maxed. I don't need the transporter patterns. What I do need are Michael Burnham shards and I'm not getting them because these two guys are in this pack. It's incredibly frustrating. Ship XP and officer XP. I don't need that. If I need ship XP, I pay for it in Latinum. If I I have 20 million officer XP, I don't need that. This is all just crap filler that doesn't belong in this pack, especially when players are paying for these packs. They don't need this stuff in there because everything is easily acquirable. Officer XP, you can get through the faction hunt. Ship XP, you can you can use Latinum or just use your ship. And Spock and Pike, yes, some players might want those shards, but they don't belong in the Discovery Recruit Packs. They belong in the Ultra Recruit Packs. 
So this is how I've been able to acquire so many spore drive components though. I've been getting them to drop very frequently from these packs and I've probably opened about 15 packs or so. And that's what's brought me to where, what I have right now. So if you're looking at buying a pack, I would definitely look at the recruit packs for the discovery, but I would make sure you wait for an event. You definitely want to kind of double hit that uh, any kind of event that might come up that even though if you need spore drives, you definitely want to be doing that during a disco recruit event so that you can get extra rewards as well. <clears throat> so that leads me to context is for Kings. So before I get to that, I'm going to read this message I sent over to Panic for the players. I sent this on September 10th at 3.22 p.m. Central Standard Time. I said, hey, I'm getting ready for a video, but I have been bombarded by players who want me to do a strike video or uninstall back before the update, etc. I'm actually super excited for the content as I'm going to include that into this video, but players need to know the game plan. They need a roadmap of the discovery arcs and how they are going to connect because mostly everyone is confused. People are asking me if they should hold off on buying packs as disco events have been pulled. Also, there are many players who are quitting or on the verge as they hate completely paywalled events and i do agree i understand scopely needs to make money but to have everything paywalled is excessive you need to give them something that they can grind and then they can run the optional pay events like it has been done in the past i hope all is well no response is needed i just wanted to give you these players perspectives in an effort that we can come back to some sort of happy medium that pleases both both sides so i sent that over to panic and a couple of days later, we got contexts for Kings. And of course we all did this because it was super easy. It was, it wasn't fun. Um, you had to move your miner every minute or so and refresh the node and you could probably get it done in under an hour or less. And you got Tritanium and battleship parts, which I don't understand why we're getting battleship parts when we have an explorer. <laughs> the, the event is for an explorer class vessel. That this doesn't make any sense. Did we just like literally just totally guess on what rewards to put into this event and slap it together? That's what it feels like. I do appreciate the Tritanium. I definitely needed it. But the, the, for an event for disco content, you get no disco rewards. That doesn't make any sense to me. And this leaderboard, I'm sorry, I am not going to sit on a node for and refresh it every minute for a day. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. And that's pretty much the extent. They've pulled all the other events. They're having issues with the anomaly events that they can't run right now. My, my guess, if you go back to my speculation video, I still think that that is where they want to end up the discovery arc is, you know, by jumping into the mirror universe. Cause I do think that those ships that we are shooting in those mycelium sectors are Terran ships. However, there were, there are a lot of things that got real messed up real quick. So hopefully Everything can get ironed out. Hopefully those anomaly events, we can actually get notifications about where they are since they only last for 10 minutes because it was a hot mess. But I am still really excited for this content. I'm still looking forward to unlocking my discovery, getting it tiered up. One thing I did forget is the refinery because I've had this question before. So I went into Elkars and um, Fartasia was posting and some work he was doing on this. And so big shout out to him for helping the player base with this. So as you tear up your USS Discovery, your refinery is going to have, hmm, how should I put this? Increased pulls from the refinery. 
they are not going to dramatically increase, but they will get better as you tear up the ship. And so a lot of players are saying, you know, should I go ahead and do my refinery? It's really up to you. If it's something you're just, you know, want to jump the gun on, definitely go for it. Myself, I did one chest and then I saw that and I held off. I'm holding off until I get my discovery up to a certain level. I did post that information in my Discord as well. You might have to scroll up a little bit in the Star Trek Fleet Command Room to see it. Or if you just want to tag me in the Discord chat and I can go ahead and repost it for everyone to see as well. So other than that, hopefully I, I covered everything about the discovery. If you do have any questions about it, definitely pop them down below. Click that like and that subscribe along with that bell for future notifications on future content. And thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you later.